Would you like to know the ideal settings that you need to dial in for Streamlabs OBS when you're going to Facebook Live? And in today's video, we're gonna be covering Streamlabs OBS Facebook Live settings that you're gonna be using in 2020, so stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale and this is Live Streaming Tech. If you wanna learn more about live streaming online, places like Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, and beyond, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn that little bell notification on so you don't miss a single one of these videos. So this past year, we actually covered Streamlabs OBS Facebook Live settings, but it has actually kind of changed quite a bit since we launched that video. So I think it's important that we go back to the well and look at some of the options that they have available and what you need to do to actually get them dialed in. Without any further ado, I'm gonna let Walt take it away from here. Back to Streamlabs OBS. Uh, there's a little bit different. So some of you that have seen the 2019 video, you're gonna see the format is slightly different or the overlay or the uh, graphic user interface for Streamlabs OBS is slightly different, but the settings are still going to be quite the same. However, I'm gonna kind of deviate a little bit from what Facebook recommends and I'm gonna kind of go why as we go through this. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure when you're in Streamlabs OBS that you're logged in to the Facebook platform through Streamlabs OBS. Then you're gonna to go to the bottom left-hand corner and you're going to click settings. First thing we wanna go over is we're gonna go over the video. So the first number at the very top is the base canvas resolution. This is what you see. This is what you see as a streamer. This is what is coming off your monitor or your laptop screen or whatever. This is exactly what you are seeing. Now, the output or the scaled resolution is what your viewer is going to see. So there are, um, you can obviously go below 720, but we're going to skip all that. If you do want to go below 720, uh, as far as your resolution is concerned, you can bounce back to our older video. I'm going to throw a card up right above my head as I'm saying this and check it out there where I'll go over the order settings. But just to skip and make it, you know, a shorter video, we're going to talk about 720p and 1080p. Um, so uh, Dale R, we already have it set to 720. So that means it's going to scale this resolution down and the viewer is gonna see 720. The reason why he does this is because the fact that he is not a game streamer on Facebook Live. Now, if you are a game streamer, it's quite easy now to level up and to be able to access that 1080p. And uh, all you have to do is have to have 100 followers on your business slash game or like page and you have to uh, stream two uh, out of the f past 14 days, and I think it was like for two hours a piece and whatnot, but it, it's very easy to get. Now, here lies the problem, and as we're gonna come over here, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So now we're gonna go to output. I'm gonna go ahead and click advanced. You can keep it on simple if you want to, but let's go to advanced. Uh, we're gonna bounce past the audio track, and we're gonna look at the encoder, but real quick, we're gonna talk about this bit rate down here. So uh, a 720p at 30 frames per second, 3000 kilobits per second, or KBPS, um, is um, it will work? It's optimal. Um, anywhere between 3,000 and 4,000 uh, kilobits per second is what I would recommend. Um, this is actually what I've used to game on uh, Facebook Live as well. Um, so it definitely works. Uh, the problem lies is once you level up and you get that 1080p um, at 30 frames per second, or you do 720p at 60 frames per second, you are hit with a cap of as the recording of this video. Uh, you're hit with a cap of 4,000 kilobits per second. Unfortunately, uh, that's what Facebook is implementing right now. So maybe if we ask them nicely and we, we keep poking and prodding, they're gonna up that, uh, that cap, that ceiling, at least to 6,000 so we can play around with it a little bit more. But let's go back up here. Let's talk about encoding um, because this is, a lot of people kind of still have this kind of mistaken or whatever. Um, now, you can leave your comments below or whatever and be nice about it. Um, you can put down what you prefer to go with. Now, the X264 encoding is going off of your CPU. So if you have an i7 or an i9 or uh, one of the top end Ryzen, you're gonna find that you're gonna have no issues with resources on there. Um, so definitely use your CPU when it comes to that. However, say you have an i5 or a low end Ryzen AMD uh, CPU, you're gonna to wanna to rely on your graphics card, your NVIDIA graphics card, which is the NV Inc. The thing is, is a lot of people, and a lot of people that come to this channel, they are starting streaming because they know the whole rule of thumb. You know, don't wait until you have the $3,000 streaming rig. 
you got a laptop or you got an old CP uh, or a PC laying around, start streaming now. When you're using the CPU, um, if you, if, for instance, if you have like an older laptop and whatnot, um, you're gonna want to probably go off the CPU because it's most likely has an onboard graphics card. Same thing if you have uh, a, an old uh, PC laying around and that is what you're gonna wanna decide. It's everyone's setup is gonna be differently. Just because you have the best computer out there, you have the, the highest end graphics card uh, Nvidia uh, has to offer, doesn't necessarily mean the next person. So yes, some people argue and say, yeah, the NV Inc is the best way to go and I would agree with you if you have have these high-end video cards whatnot but a lot of people that are starting out streaming don't have this option so you would want to stick with the X264 now however Dale has both and he still likes to do the X264 yeah we've played around with it a little bit he hasn't noticed any difference here's the other thing too if you're a game streamer you're gonna find out that it depends on the game too on whether you want to go with the CPU and the graphics card for instance if the game is not graphics optimized graphically optimized um, and what I mean by that is uh, some of the newer games that come out in beta or they're just just kind of look trashy or whatnot you're gonna want to stick with the X264 and then let the graphics card try to handle that poor graphics optimization. Now, if it's gra graphically optimized, such as like Fortnite or whatever, then obviously go ahead and let your graphics card do the work for you. Rate control, leave it to CBR, constant bit rate. That's pretty much any platform you go to, whether it's Facebook Live, YouTube, and so on. The bit rate, we've already kind of covered that. Once again, Facebook right now, as of the recording of this video, has us capped at 4,000 kilobits per second. Hopefully that goes up. Now, keyframe interval. A lot of people have kind of noticed this too on the forums or what Facebook recommends to set it at. If you set it at zero through Streamlabs OBS, that is an auto setting. That is, pro that is fine, you can do it that way. But what they recommend is two. You can actually just take that zero out and hit two. And then you just hit done and save. Dale prefers the zero. CPU usage. Okay, so here's the other thing a lot of people get confused on. So very fast and fast, it's pretty decent. That's what everyone kind of sticks with. Anything above that, you're really not gonna notice that much difference and it's gonna use a ton of resources when it comes to uh, how you're encoding and whatnot. And it's just gonna, it's gonna bog you down even more, especially if you're a gamer. Now, if you have an older system or a laptop or something that is does not have that horsepower and you are struggling just even to, uh, 420p, um, you're gonna wanna go with like ultra fast or super fast. So once again though, we're gonna leave that though because Dale likes the very fast. That is what we're gonna have as far as the advanced. You really don't wanna mess with anything else when you're starting out streaming on Stream Labs OBS. Once again, you can go into simple mode and you can do pretty much the same thing. You can change the encoder and you can change the video bit rate to what you would like. Once again, I would recommend uh, if you can hit that 4,000 kilobits per second, then go for it. The only thing that I wouldn't recommend is say you're playing a lot of static games, such as like card games like Magic the Gathering or whatnot. You're really not gonna need that at uh, 720, uh, 60 frames per second. Drop that bad boy down to 720, 30 frames per second, and you can drop that video bit rate almost as low as 2,000 kilobits per second and not have really an image reduction uh, going on and this is good for a lot of your viewers because they're going to be probably watching you on mobile or other devices or whatnot and you don't want them constantly buffering because when they buffer they're going to bounce out but you know what you shouldn't bounce out of is you shouldn't bounce out of this video right up here where we talk about Restream I.O. That's right, Dale's gonna talk about it. And the cool thing about Restream I.O. it allows you to stream to multiple Facebook groups or multiple Facebook business pages or game pages. So give it a look, I'll see you there.